beginning our practice with this invitation to mindfulness of the body by welcoming ourselves in this space, welcoming yourself to this moment just as you are. And during this meditation, we'll be invited to practice with the four elements, the earth element, the air element, the water element, and the fire element. This is offered in contemplation of the body. And just as so often with different ways that we practice, this division of the body is not actually how the body is. It's a way for us to see, understand and comprehend the body, not as a actual existence of the body. So beginning with the earth element, the solidity, the stillness, the heaviness of the body. Bringing your awareness to the earth element in the body. And at any time during this meditation, you're welcome to adapt instructions to meet your own needs, to let go of my words. allowing your own body to offer its instructions. So I'm bringing our awareness to the earth element. We can start with a sense of grounding of the body, feeling the weight of the body Resting on the chair or the cushion or the floor or the earth. Allowing the sense of contact, pressure. And feeling the sense of rest and support of the ground beneath you. And see if it might be possible to let go of any extra tension that you might be carrying to be held by the earth beneath us. Remembering that in each moment we are being held on this spinning planet by this mysterious force that we sometimes call gravity. And at every moment we can turn towards this understanding that we're resting and supported by the earth. For some, it might be helpful to think of the body being rooted in the earth, grounded in the earth. Allowing this earth element in the body, the hardness, the heaviness, the bones, the teeth, the weight of the body to be felt. Earth element. Gently allowing this question to arise. 
what does the earth element that is in you offer as wisdom? Not me, not mine, not myself. The wisdom of the earth element. And in appreciation, Offering, may the earth element that is you flourish. May the earth element in me flourish. As we begin to feel the sensation of the body in the stillness, we may begin to feel the flow of the air element, feeling the air element around the body, the air element in the body, and this intricate dance of the air element in every moment, the movement of air that is felt in the body is this rhythm, this dance, this gift of mutuality where we are in a dance with all the plants air element, expansion, contraction, sensing into the air element, wherever you might notice it in the body, the nostrils, the lungs, pressure, pushing, movement, air element, Not me, not mine, not myself. What is the wisdom that the air element is offering you? What insights might arise from the contemplation of the air element? And offering our appreciation May the air element in you flourish. May the air element that is me flourish. And in the movement of the body with the air element, we might begin to notice the suppleness of the body. 
one of the indications of the water element, the flowing, supple, tender nature of the body, water element, fluidity, bringing your awareness to the water element in the body, the water in the skin, saliva in your mouth, perhaps even feeling the sensation of the blood through the pulse or the heartbeat, water element, Not me, not mine, not myself. The water element, a gift of the rivers and streams and oceans and rainfall. And then returned again to the cycle of waters the water in our body literally coming from our ancestors, plants, animals, human, water element, what is the wisdom of the water element is offering What can we learn from the contemplation of the water element in the body? And appreciating this element of water, fluidity, flow, may the water in us flourish. May the water in me flourish. as our contemplation of the water element, we might feel as well the fire element, the heat, the warmth of the body, the coolness perhaps of the air around the body, the varying temperature, fire element. And just as the earth at its core, hot, magma, heat, our body too is warm. And the heat is part of the vitality of the body the aliveness of the body, our warm-blooded bodies. If 
fire element. Bringing the contemplation of the fire element, the body. Sometimes we can feel the fire element, digestion. We notice the processes of aging. You can also imagine the fire element as the passion, the sparks for our aliveness. These fires that invite us to engage, to show up. Fire element. What is the wisdom of the fire element offering you? How might contemplating the fire element support you in your practice? Now allowing the awareness to feel the body in its entirety. This body made up of all the elements, the fire, the earth, the water, the air, ever changing, ever shifting. Not me, not mine not myself, no boundary between the fire element internally and externally, the water in us becomes the water of the world, the air in each moment to dance with the universe. The earth element Part of the cycle, the minerals in our bones and bodies come from the earth, go to the earth. No separation. We enter our with all others. We are more than human. Nature is in us, and we are of nature. And as we finish this meditation, Invitation is to remember how deeply our lives are intertwined with all of the world, all other aspects, all beings, sentient and otherwise. And offering this meditation for the freedom and liberation of all beings.
Thank you. Thank you for your practice. You might want to take a moment to stretch, wiggle the body a little if you've been still. Bring some water element or earth element into the body, food or snacks, if that's supportive. So I thought I would offer some um, reflections on the elements and then we have some time for some sharing. And um, the first thing I just wanna appreciate everyone for showing up and for being in Sangha together and um, really grateful to be part of this queer lineage of knowing the Dharma and studying the Dharma and part of, for me, what that means is this real intentionality for disrupting systems of power, power over and welcoming and honoring like the galaxies and the possibilities of what it means to be alive. And uh, I also wanna acknowledge that I'm descendant from Irish ancestors here in the United States and that part of this disrupting and unsettling is um, really examining and investigating and disrupting patterns of white supremacy that live in me and in the world. And so I, I really find that this practice of the elements can be very supportive in this undoing, this disrupting. And so it may not seem like really linear, I'm not very linear, so just put that out there to begin with. <laughs> But I'll, I'll, I'll make the connection, but I'm going to start with this idea of disrupting. And uh, the part of this disrupting is this understanding of what in Buddhism we call anatta, A-N-A-T-T-A, -T -T -A, which Thich Nhat Hanh so lovingly is named interbeing, which I really like. Thich Nhat Hanh is a wonderful Vietnamese um, teacher. And so I want to start with this quote from Adrian Marie Brown and uh, put it in the chat as well. And uh, believe it or not, this was 2018. And so uh, we have been doing this practice for a long time. She says, when those with power are doing inhumane or anti-planet things, our choice to be disruptive, to be impolite, is one of the ways we wage small resistance that can become mass resistance and large scale cultural and political transformation. We have learned this from ancestors in our lineage who helped expose and break massive systems like chattel slavery or Holocaust genocide. And so my practice, this mindfulness practice that I engage in, I think is one of the most powerful tools for disruption and it doesn't always seem so because often it's coupled with this idea that we you are mindful to be calm and to be peaceful. But that is one of the aspects of mindfulness. But to me, it's actually sort of a byproduct or a, a nice extra add-on. But the real beauty of the liberation is this ability to see clearly and to disrupt patterns that cause suffering and cause harm. And so one of the practices of anatta is this seeing through these identity concretizations. And it's quite challenging in our community of queerness where we are erased all the time to let go of identities that other people are like, they don't exist. So like, how do we practice with really kind of understanding this both and? And so I like to think about this anatta as really interrupting these intentionalities towards empire, towards having, towards owning. And so that way we can really flourish in this multiplicity of identities and possibilities and really sense the concretization that comes along with the ownership of an identity and the commodification. And so this wisdom teaching of the elements 
is so powerful in this regard. And many of you know, and I'm sure you practice in many different ways where many spiritual and wisdom teachings focus on the elements, particularly many indigenous teachings as the you know, Buddha came out of a very animistic culture. And so in this practice, we are invited into this contemplation of the body to know that this body that we call human is more than human that the more than human world is us, you know, that we are composed of nature, nature is us, that we are more than human, even in of ourselves. And to me, this can be so helpful because as we turn to the body, we can often think about just the preservation of this body or of the bodies that I want. And when we think of ourselves as precious water right i mean like then we're part of this whole water cycle that we want to be tending towards the earth in this body and the outside earth we want to be tending towards the air like this beauty of clean air that we then enter in our bodies so there's no separation here and so i have found that this letting go in this opening to different ways of seeing can increase rather than kind of um, decrease, like just really increase the sense of compassion, of tenderness, of friendliness. As a queer person, as a trans person, my relationship to my body has been extremely problematic, you know, as someone who you know, was born and raised as a girl, it meant that I had this objectification of my body as a way to navigate society and to be seen. And like, why aren't you using your, you know, feminine wiles, if you will, you know, like you're really not taking advantage of what you have to get through the world. And I was just like, ah, and so this distancing uh, from the body and not wanting to be in the body has been really a lot of my practice of like, how do I do this first very encouraged contemplation of the body when the body has been the site of such harm, you know, internally from me caused upon my own body, externally from views and opinions and ways of being in the world. And so this sense of like, oh, I'm just a mountain. Look at this. I'm just a pile of rocks. I like rocks. <laughs> it could be like, oh, right. Oh, good. Here we have the body or like water. Look at this is the body of water. And we also know that like nature, the body breaks down. You know, this body breaks down, the nature breaks down. So the we are of the nature and these elements to be just as, you know, we won't, we aren't on this path, this linear path of progress, which the culture instills on us, always more, always better. We're on the cycles, just like nature. We're coming back again, you know, we were just talking before we got on Coral, with the dark it's getting, you know, we are on these cycles. And we have imposed on us these views of linearity, which the body does not do. And so we can take these practices of the elements, which I just introduced, to really help us know that this body is not mine. It's not me. I don't own it. I'm borrowing it, bringing it along, contend it like a garden. And just like a garden, you know, there's going to be a lot of compost, you know, you're going to have to sit in the compost for a while, you know, there's going to be mess, not always going to be, you don't have the harvest all the time, you don't have the flowers all the time, it's a whole process around and around. And so I find that this practice of the elements is really supportive in bringing us into a relationship with the body 
that lets go of a lot of the projections and the habit conditions that we may have had instilled in us. And not in a direct way, but sort of in the tangential way that we queers are often good doing and queering the view. So like if the direct line is just like, here's the binary, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do, you know, do that. Then we can kind of just come in this way from the elements and then we can kind of settle on the earth and allow the body to flow like water or be fiery like volcano when it's needed or simmering, you know. And oftentimes the fire element is one of the ones that I think is really misunderstood. So I'm just going to say a couple more words about that before we end, because I think especially in meditation and Dharma cultures, we can have the image of the Buddha sitting so serenely and so stoically that the fire element we're forgotten about because that's a statue. <laughs> we are not statues. And the fire element is this passion that makes our aliveness. And it's hard for us to stay alive in these cultures, these dominant societies. There's a lot of pressure. So this cultivating these inner fires, this inner passion, this inner aliveness, this vitality is critical. And yet those of us who have experienced, you know, the immensity of forest fires know too that fire element can be very dangerous. And so sometimes we can lash out with the fire element, lash at ourselves, lash out at each other, cause incredible destruction, be very scary. But this practice of knowing our fire element, of being with the passion of aliveness, the vitality that is you, is so supportive and so needed. We are all each so needed at this time, our communities to support each other. So I just wanted to end with this uh, wonderful quote by a Buddhist teacher, Ruth King, who many of you may know because she, she has great studies and practices around um, mindful of race. Um, but this practice, this quote here, ties this practice of looking at the elements to this understanding of equanimity, of how we can uh, really practice and contemplate the elements to bring equanimity and balance to ourselves. And it also really helps us understand that this sense of equanimity is not static, that it can really um, open up and be felt in different ways. So I'll just read this and um, then we'll have some time for some group wisdom sharing. So this is by Ruth King. She says, equanimity can feel internally like a great mountain with the mind solid and stable, undisturbed by the changing seasons. Or it can be like the ocean with the mind vast, deep and immeasurable, undisturbed by whatever swims, floats or housed in its waters. Equanimity can be like a strong fire roaring, engulfing and transmuting, undisturbed by whatever is thrown into it. Or like immense space, open, allowing and receiving, undisturbed by the objects that arise and pass away. So in this way, we may be undisturbed by all these projections and conditions, but in that way we are disrupting the habits and the conditions and allowing us to flourish in the way that we will through this wisdom from the contemplation, the elements. So thank you, thank you for your kind attention. It's really uh, important to me that we have some time for the wisdom sharing of the group. So this is a time for us to offer reflections, um, share practices that you may find beneficial in this regard. Maybe there's other things in working with elements or other ways that you have. This is a very short uh, reflection on it. So uh, you can either raise your real hand or the Zoom hand. Um, and uh, 
being, I don't know if you all have any guidelines around sharing, but just being mindful of the space and who's in it and um, opportunity to reflect together. Thank you.